In April 1929, voters approved a bond to build a new $125,000 high school. The three-story building would be 99 feet wide by 172 feet long, be made of brick with terracotta trim. Brick from the 1893 public school would be cleaned and reused to save costs. The new school would have 12 classrooms wired for radio. There would be modern equipment for home economics, manual arts, and science and biology labs. On the third floor would be a 750-seat auditorium, with an additional 500 seats available through sliding doors to the study hall. The gymnasium on the ground floor would be able to seat up to 1,000 spectators with its innovative folding bleachers. Adjacent to the gym would be modern boys and girls locker rooms with showers. On January 22, 1930, students and teachers worked together to move furniture and equipment from the old high school building to their new quarters. Amid the hustle, the boss of each department could be heard issuing commands. At noon, everyone dropped what they were doing to rush for their lunch boxes. Even some parents came by to pitch in, and by the end of the day, the bulk of the move was complete. In 1932, the drama class performed an operetta for the public. Students used money from their class savings to buy window curtains for the auditorium to match the red velvet stage curtains. The modern equipment in the home economics classroom included electric stoves. How many of us remember the clackety-clack-clack of typing class? In the 1930s, egg classes were part of the curriculum taught by Mr. Wren Pearson. Students could also take classes in mechanical drawing. The commercial class included business bookkeeping and loan amortization. Here students conduct chemistry experiments watched over by their teacher, Mr. George Fisher. The library on the third floor was on the west side of the building with a door connecting to the study hall. These stairs across from the main office lead to the third floor. Mr. Hodge was a longtime history teacher. Miss Florence Fryer taught at Cheney High School for many years. Shh! Remember, there's no talking in the study hall. There were radiators in the classrooms and drinking fountains in the halls. Here is a peek into the main office in 1940. Girls in the home economics class learned sewing and needle crafts, as well as household budgeting and cooking. Note the photo on the wall of Cheney native Governor Martin overlooking the staff of the pine cone as they prepare the new yearbook. The annual Cheney High School Carnival was organized by committees of students. Teacher and coach Mr. George Fisher became principal of Cheney High School in 1946. In 1947, Cheney's wrestling team won the championship. In 1951, work was underway to add a two-story addition to the back of the school. Mrs. Ruppel and Mrs. Conley prepared school lunches from scratch every day. On May 11, 1950, President Harry S. Truman made a quick stop in Cheney. 
The band played Hail to the Chief, and student body president Edgar Grogan greeted the president, who said a few words before being driven into Spokane. The janitors moved things, fixed things, set things up, and took things down. And kept everything working in the school. Girls could learn how to operate the mimeograph machine and the new electric adding machines, among other equipment in the 1950s. Rallying the crowd in support of the team were the cheerleaders. Pictured here are Mary Lou Schof, Helen Hansen, Abby Showalter, and Gary Carmen. In 1955, the prom was held in the new edition of the school. How many students had to apologize to a stop sign while taking driver's ed from Mr. Ingle? The homecoming royalty, the game, and the dance after were always the high point of the fall season. Dorothy Cicero was one of the secretaries who, through the years, kept the school running smoothly. Mr. Jack Filio was a teacher, guidance counselor, and vice principal at Cheney High School. Art teacher, Ms. Ruth Hanrahan, also taught English early in her career. Home economics teacher, Ms. Ruth Schaefer, particularly enjoyed teaching girls how to sew. Mr. Dave Doherty taught math, while Mrs. Morgan had the duty of checking to make sure that the girls' skirts weren't too short for the stairs. Mr. Floyd Cook was a beloved teacher and track coach who continued to follow his students after he retired. He was still attending the alumni picnic when he was 103 years old. Mrs. Joanne Doherty taught students how to diagram sentences, and Mrs. McKeon taught algebra. The band room was Mr. Harvey's domain, and Mrs. Paulson helped students with their work. Mrs. Margaret Whitfield and all of the other dedicated teachers gave their students the tools to take on adult life. <laughs> 